So I want to really break this down. Yeah. Because we're all hanging on your words because that difference between a no is the truth. Yeah. Versus a no is just fear. Right. And self-doubt. Yeah. And knowing being deeper. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they go, well, I don't hear my intuition. What yes. do I do if I yes. don't hear it? This is a skill that you can build. It's like building a muscle. As women, especially, oh my gosh, really all generations of women, but when you think about women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s in particular, yep. a lot of us were raised to be quiet, to to uh, not actually like say what we mean and to be people pleasers. Or we learn that we're not enough on our own. Look at all the studies that show women will make decisions based on consensus, right? You look at the studies that show when they ask little girls and boys a question, the boys will give an answer right away. The girls will turn to each other and try to come up with a consensus answer. So we are especially as women learn, like to not hear our own intuition. And so as adults, the beautiful thing is we all have it and you are never too young or too old to start learning how to hear it again. And so one of my favorite tools to build your intuition is just to take some time, get still, ask a question, see if anything comes up. And that's okay if it doesn't. But then also carve out some time to think back to moments in your life when you had a gut feeling about something and maybe maybe you trusted it and then what happened and then similarly think back to moments when you had a gut feeling you didn't trust it you let everyone else's opinion tell you what to do or whatever you went against your feeling and then what happened then and as you focus on those moments in your life you start to build that muscle mm. of remembering what does that feel like when i have a feeling and when I trusted it or didn't trust it, what happened? And you start building that muscle over time. And you've got to give yourself grace, right? Because you talk about neural pathways on your show all the time. But for a lot of us, we haven't learned how to hear ourselves or trust ourselves our entire life. What if we all take up this hobby of, I'm going to learn to trust my own intuition. And every day I'm going to take one step forward of trusting it, right? Or just asking myself before I just give an answer to someone and say yes when I really mean no. Like say, oh yeah, I'll do, I'll volunteer for that thing oh. when you don't want to do it or whatever it is, right? Just pause and be like, how am I really feeling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's your intuition telling you exactly what you need to know. And then just making that decision one step at a time to start trusting and to rebuild that muscle. You know, if I can offer to you listening just a little um, explanation for how I do this. Yes, I would, yes. So for me, absolutely, got to get still. Yeah. Because I notice that the lies are more dominant and yes. the self-doubt is more powerful the busier I am. Mm. And the more I'm just in the go, 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 go. Because there's a lot of emotion and energy with go, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And so when I get still and I really drop into what is true for me, mm -hmm. there is a very distinct feeling associated for me personally. And the feeling is this. If let's just say that I have to make like a phone call there, every one of us has a phone call we're probably putting off or dreading, right? And if you drop into, how do I really feel about this? Do I need to make this call? Should I not? Or a conversation. There's a conversation that you need to have mm -hmm. and we avoid it and we avoid it and we avoid it. But your knowing is going, you got to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. But the no is like, not today, not today, mm -hmm. not today. For me, I can drop into the knowing if I really try to feel the energy around doing it or not. Mm. So when I'm putting something off, even though it feels a little bit like a relief, mm -hmm. I feel a part of me shrinking. Mm. Mm -hmm. There is something about the energy of that that is depleting and constricting and small. Mm -hmm. And if I access the knowing, what is always true for me, even if it scares the daylights out of me, is that there is something more expansive mm. and there is something through that experience that I know is going to expand or grow mm. 
or free me up. And that's how I distinguish at a very deep level, okay, what is actually my knowing versus what is the no being driven by emotion or self-doubt or pattern mm-hmm. or whatever. Isn't that so true, right? When we live like in alignment with our truth, you feel that expansion, that, like, that freedom, that freedom. And even it's like the thing you're dreading, you don't want to do it, mm-hmm. but then you do it and you just feel that freedom. Whereas if you're letting yourself doubt take over the thing telling you don't do it, that doesn't feel that same way. And I love how you described it. It feels constricted. And I just think of, you know, we think, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, be who everyone else wants me to be or dim my light to play it safe or to get love. It feels that same way. Dimming our light, not being who we truly are can feel like the safe thing to do but it feels constricted. But when we show up fully authentically, even if not everyone gets it, if we make that decision, I'm not crazy, I'm just first, right? You're gonna feel what Mel just described, that expansiveness, because it's part of your knowing of who you're born to be, of who you're born to be on this earth. And like, yeah, I love that, that's beautiful. Well, I always get the question, and I know you too, too. How do I know the difference between something I'm afraid to do Mm. and the fear is real? Yeah. Here's what I have to say to you. Nine times out of 10, I am afraid to do the thing that I know is right. Yeah, yeah. And the fear is real. Yeah. And that's why you have to get still. Yes, exactly. Now, there's another lie. So this is kind of the third lie that you really had to dismantle, which is your weight determines your worth. Mm, mm. Whoo, yes. For every person listening, Mel Robbins, most of my entire life, I believed my weight determined my worth. What does that mean? Right now, 89% of girls and women will opt out of meaningful activities, including interaction with friends and loved ones, when they do not like how they look. We miss out on our lives when we are waiting on our weight. And by the way, for some people, it's not literal weight. It's the weight of other people's expectations that they need to stop waiting on, the weight of their own expectations, right? What are you waiting on right now in your life and how are you letting that determine your worth uh, before you live your best life? So this was a lie that took me most of my entire life so far to unlearn. And I created a business that was so about celebrating every person, you know, for for their authentic beauty. I was able to overcome so many lies that lead to self-doubt in my life. I was able to build self-worth around believing I was worthy of having a CEO title, mm-hmm. right? Uh, of running a business, of building a team of over a thousand, all those things. But I still struggle with the lie that my weight determined my worth. And it wasn't until my daughter's one year birthday We're at this hotel and I'm about to opt out of swimming again because I don't want to wear the swimsuit. I want to sit in the, uh, on the chair Mm -hmm. on the side of the pool, all covered up and miss out on this moment in her life. When I realized what has waiting on my weight already cost me in my life. And the answer, way too much. Memories, experiences, joy, like all of it. Because as humans, as you know, we're wired to avoid pain at all costs. And I had been thinking, oh, if I go out there in my swimsuit, I'll be judged. I'll be this. I'll be that. I was associating pain with that. And that moment, I flipped the script. And I associated more pain with what I had missed out on, with the pain of regret, with the pain of what has waiting on my weight already cost me. And that is how I flipped the lie around. And I decided no more. And I literally took my cover up off. I shook my cellulite with joy. And I got right in that pool. And, and, and I made it not about me anymore. I'm like, the, it, me hiding on the sidelines is what I'm doing is I'm telling my daughter she's not worthy of her body either. I am not, uh uh-uh. Like that lie has got to stop now. The moment we step into our power, that is when we give other people permission to step into theirs, right? And now every time I will walk around in a swimsuit, all I think about is I would never care what someone else looks like. People do not care what I look like. This is about like living life with no regret. This is about inspiring other people to embrace all of who they are and start considering 
what has waiting on your way already cost you, mm-hmm. right? And, and when we think of it that way, that yes. is almost way more painful than the fear that we're making up in our heads about just living our best life as who we are, exactly as we are. I, 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 unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't have anything to add, so I'm going to go to <laughs> line number four. So line number four, if I stand out, I'll get kicked out. What does that mean? Mm, this is a big one because as women, we learn to downplay our strengths, to dim our light, to fit in. We often will bond over problems, right? We'll be self-deprecating. If we get a victory, we'll downplay it and give credit away to someone else. But if there's something wrong with us, like, you know, we'll – We'll tell everyone, oh, my house is a disaster. My kid is a hot mess. And we bond with each other over problems. And we worry like, oh, wow, I crushed this. Or I did, you know, this happened to me. We worry if we share that, then, you know, if we're great, we'll get hate. I actually struggle with this one. Yeah, There are very few people that I share my success with Mm. or my wins Mm. or my the things that I'm really proud of that are going really really well like I chronically downplay things you're somebody that I'm the first person to text the first person to be like oh my god this thing like big and small yeah but this is definitely something that I struggle with that I uh you know and I grew up around someone who constantly was griping about other people Mm. who were wealthy Mm -hmm. or who had this or who had that or had the other thing. And I started to associate uh, any kind of standing out Mm. as attracting disapproval, a lack of love. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it, right? We think if I stand out, I'll get kicked out. I will will no longer belong and be loved. And so we hide and dim our light. And thank you for just texting me when you have a victory because I hope you sense I'm so freaking excited for you (laughs) and so happy. That's why I text you. And and real friends want the best in others. And it just takes every one of us together to start celebrating wins of other people to start sharing our own wins. And I think one, just one tip on that for everybody listening, if you're just hesitant to, you know, unlearn that lie and you're you're just, you're worried that people will think, oh, who does she think she is? Or she's arrogant or that all that crap, which is just their own unworthiness being reflected on you because they also believe that lie. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm going to share my win because of myself, just flip it and think, When I share my win, I'm living an example of freeing another woman to start sharing hers. We all get no's all the time. Is it a no like hell no or is it a knowing to keep going? If we listen to our soul, right, we get a knowing, an intuition, a still small voice, a gut feeling.